Barfoot. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Toronto Institute for Aerospace Studies. This is my PhD student, Paul Fergio. And we're here on Devon Island to test some of the autonomous rover technologies that we're developing in our lab. Uh, this summer we've elected to focus on what we call estimation techniques. So we're primarily interested in trying to do things like localize a planetary rover if it was on another planet. On, GPS error dead. On both Mars and the Moon, we don't necessarily have access to GPS to determine the position of a rover. So we're interested in developing GPS technologies on. that could be substitutes or to help augment uh, what GPS would provide. So this summer we came here with four experiments. And I'll just uh, point you to this cart right here and try to explain what those four experiments are. Uh, the first experiment uh, is an engineering experiment and we're developing a technology called visual odometry that primarily employs stereo cameras but can also make use of additional sensing such as inclinometers and sun sensors and wheel odometers and by combining all of this information we're trying to relatively estimate how a mobile platform like a rover or even a, a either a robotic unmanned rover or a manned rover uh, trying to estimate its position relatively as it moves. Uh, the second experiment that we have this summer is uh, using only the sun sensor and inclinometers. We're trying to provide a direct substitute GPS for error. GPS, which will allow one to determine the absolute position of a rover on the surface of another planet. So this could be used directly uh, in GPS place of GPS. On. The third experiment, and we don't have it here, is to use a long-range scanning laser rangefinder to scan hills such as the ones that you're seeing right here. And by building up a three-dimensional model of these hills uh, from the scanning laser rangefinder and then matching those scans to orbital images that we might have in advance, we're developing a second technology that could be used as a substitute for GPS. And the fourth experiment uh, we're working with Dr. Gordon Asinski at the University of Western Ontario. We're looking at how we can combine some of the engineering rover sensors with a scientific payload. In this case, a ground-penetrating radar. We don't have it mounted at the moment, but it would normally sit here on our cart. And he's interested in certain geomorpholo geomorphological features um, that we find here on Devon Island, such as polygon-patterned ground. And we've been out to a few sites and we're trying to look at how we could investigate these sites robotically. Uh, so what would happen is the cart would run a transect across this type of ground and it would measure both what uh, is happening in the subsurface using the ground penetrating radar, but at the same time it could use the stereo camera to build up a three-dimensional model of the surface, which would allow the scientists to help interpret the subsurface data by having a model of the surface. So in summary, those are the four experiments that we've come to do on Devon Island, and uh, we're actually just at the end of our trip, and we've had uh, quite a lot of success on all four fronts. We've gathered all our data sets, and we'll be going back to the lab and developing these techniques and testing them on the data sets over the next year, and hopefully coming back next year with our uh, actuated robot. 16 meters traveled, battery 92%, operations data stop, check distance 1, scan distance 1000, Manager on, log directory on, GPS on, compass on, odometry on, camera on, sun sensor on. This is going to take a long time. <laughs>